Hi everybody, it's Miss Bolar with tonight's bedtime story. This one's called The Little Brute Family. It is uh, by Russell Hoban and illustrated by Lillian Hoban. In the middle of a dark and shadowy woods lived a little family of brutes. There was Papa Brute, Mama Brute, Brother and Sister Brute, and Baby Brute. In the morning, Mama cooked a sand and gravel porridge. And the family snarled and grimaced as they spooned it up. Oh, I don't think I'd want to eat sand and gravel porridge. No one said please, no one said thank you, and no one said how delicious, because it was not delicious. Baby Brute howled between spoonfuls. Brother and sister kicked each other under the table, and Mama and Papa made faces while they ate. What a grumpy family, huh? After breakfast, Papa Brute took up his sack and went to gather sticks and stones. Mama stayed home to thump the furniture and bang the pots and scold the baby. Brother and sister pushed and shoved and punched and pinched their way to school. In the evenings, Mama served a stew of sticks and stones, and the family ate it with growls and grumbling. Then they groaned and went to sleep. That was how they lived. They never laughed and said delightful. They never smiled and said, how lovely. Do you like to be in that family of brutes? I wouldn't. In the spring, the little brutes made heavy kites that bumped along the ground and would not fly. In the summer, they flung themselves into the pond and sank like stones, but never learned to swim. In the fall, they jumped into great piles of leaves and stamped on one another, yelling. In the winter, they leaped upon their crooked, clumsy sleds that took them crashing into snowbanks where they stuck head first and screamed. Doesn't sound like they have very much fun each season, does it? That's how they lived in the dark and shadowy woods. Then one day, Baby Brute found a little wandering lost good feeling in a field of daisies and he caught it in his paw and put it in his tiny pocket. Hmm, notice how his face has changed. And he felt so good that he laughed and said, how lovely. Baby Brute felt good all afternoon and at supper, when his bowl was filled with stew, he said, thank you. Then the little good feeling flew out of his tiny pocket and hovered over the table, humming and smiling. Look at his mom. Doesn't quite know what to do with that. <coughs> How lovely, said mama, without even snarling. Delightful, said papa, forgetting to growl. Oh, please said all the little brutes together, let it stay with us. And Papa smiled and said, all right, they're gonna keep that happy feeling, aren't they? When Papa Brute went out for sticks and stones the next day, he found wild berries, salad greens, and honey, and he brought them home instead. Oh, doesn't that sound a whole lot tastier? At supper, everyone said, how delicious, because it was delicious. And everyone said, please and thank you. And they never ate sticks and stone stew again. And the little good feeling stopped wandering and stayed with the little brute family. When springtime came, the little brutes made bright new kites that flew high in the sky. And in the summer, they swam beautifully. 
In the fall, they gathered nuts and acorns that they roasted by a cozy fire when winter came. And in the evening, they sang songs together. Wow, their seasons sure have changed. Aww. The little good feeling stayed and stayed and never went away. And when springtime came again, the little brute family changed their name to Nice. I like that story because it kind of shows what, how contagious one person's good feeling can be on others. I hope you enjoyed the story. Stay tuned for more bedtime stories with Miss Bolar. Good night.